Hi, my name is Sylvia. I'm passionate about languages, English in particular. Welcome to my world, world of English. Hola, so nice to see you today. You too. It's it's lovely to finally meet you in person. That's true. So it's it's the first time for us actually is, to yeah. to meet in uh, to meet in person. Mm, and uh, yeah, I guess we have to explain how how do we know each other, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> because we we work together. We work, yeah. Yeah, we work together. Uh, we both uh, we both teach, and today we'd like to share a little bit of our experience right how it is so uh, to be uh, to be a teacher but your story obviously is a very interesting one uh, because uh, you haven't been living in Poland for quite a long time tell us about it how how did it happen yes I've actually you know um, I spent most of my life abroad um, it was up north in Scotland um, my parents decided to move there when I was nine years old. So this was about 15 years ago now. So, um, yes, I, I went to school there. I grew up there. It's, um, it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, I, I, I spent a lot of time there. Yes. Uh, but my question, I think I asked you that, like, uh, without cameras uh, on, but I guess, I guess I asked you this question, why Scotland? Because many people, right, when we talk to them, they would rather go to, England, uh, to of England, course, right? Uh, the States, to yes. the States, exactly. But Scotland is not such a such a popular place. Why? Why Scotland? And I guess that the story behind it it's it's very interesting. Interesting, <laughs> yeah. Perhaps I guess uh, my father would say it's very interesting. Um, yeah. My uncle actually was studying up in Scotland in Edinburgh, okay. so um, that's that's why my dad decided to you know, go with him and, and move up there. It's, it's, my dad is very interested in history. Mm -hmm. He remembered the Battle of Stirling Bridge and he found Stirling on the map. He thought this would be a nice place to settle. <laughs> this is the story, you know, there well, is. But the story is <laughs> yeah. truly amazing, you know, how we just mm. travel around the map and say, like, yeah, let's go we'll there. And up there. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a lovely, lovely thing. How much do you remember from it, you know, from, from this, this moving? But you, uh, how old were you once again? Nine. 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 I was so you nine. were still a little girl. Mm -hmm. So you spoke Polish. Polish, mm -hmm. yes, because you studied Polish, like you learned Polish back in Poland. Yes, of course, yes. I went to, obviously, to, to school and we didn't learn English in school. So so my knowledge of English before I moved was, was nil. Mm -hmm. um, I remember... I don't remember there being any problems, you know, when I, when I started you, going you to school. You as a child, yeah? As a child, mm -hmm. yes, as a nine-year-old. I, I, we, we started going to school and I remember just sitting in class, you know, being part mm -hmm. of the furniture, really, for the first couple of months. I love the expression, part of the furniture. Yes, you know, and they, they gave me different materials to study. They wanted me to, to, to learn English, I guess, you know, in a, in a bit of an artificial way to start off with. Mm -hmm. but, um, but I remember speaking to my dad, this was after the summer, um, saying, please speak to the teacher because I'd like to be part of the class. I don't want to do my own... Thing. thing. I mm -hmm. want to go with the flow, with the learning, what they're doing. Um, so uh, I guess uh, I guess that's when, you know, I was just sitting there listening, um, absorbing everything. Yeah, would, you, would you elaborate a little bit on this artificial thing? Because mm -hmm. we as teachers, right, we teach people the language. And of course, we want to escape the artificial mm -hmm. element there, right? So why would you call it artificial for, for yourself? And I guess that's mm -hmm. something you didn't like, right? Yes, but it was, you know, it, I think the, the teachers didn't quite know how to react initially because mm -hmm. I didn't speak a word of English so they thought okay we'll just sit her in a corner give her some textbooks and she will she uh, when she's ready to be part of the class when she's picked up the language a little she will we will we will do lessons with her as you know te treat her as a student as a as anyone else um but that didn't work for me <laughs> right <laughs> it didn't work for me I um I found it a little I thought I was a little isolated at first mm -hmm. you know so I do I remember telling my dad, you know, please speak to the teacher. I, I, I don't want this. I, even though I, I felt, I must have felt at that point that I understood enough mm -hmm. to be able to be a, a, a member of the class. Yeah. But that's a great thing you're mentioning right now because it just shows that sometimes teachers or or, and students, you know, mm -hmm, people, mm -hmm. people standing, bo both of us, and how we, we just presume that somebody is not ready. But, but the knowledge is there, right? Uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. the, the heart is beating, you know, yeah. the brain is remembering yeah. things. So 
uh, actually it's a great thing to just to push yes mm-hmm. to push a little bit you know just yeah. to go just to go forward and just to, um, uh, initiate the, the the conversation the contact you we always repeat that that the that this need of survival yeah. is the key thing right mm-hmm. you just mm-hmm. have to you just have to go uh, yeah. go there and I can now quite understand that the artificial element is not something that you would do in your class now no. as a teacher no of course not I think you know it's it's unnatural right yeah. and we you know sitting with textbooks and learning grammar and learning all these formulas and learning lists of vocabulary you know off by heart it doesn't work mm-hmm. it doesn't work because we are not able to transfer this knowledge then into real life into yeah. a, into a real life situation so and it's an amazing thing you knew that back then when you were a ni- nine year old girl subconsciously i think yeah. yes but um but i um I wanted this interaction, right? I wanted this this conversation, and I know that you know there were situations where I would say something wrong, or people would not yeah. understand me. I know that, but I think, I think when you're a child, you almost you don't have this language barrier. Exactly, right? exactly. You, you, exactly. You, so that, not... that that's how the children have it, right? They mm-hmm. they just want to go, and uh, they want to go forward, and this is what we encourage our students to do. You know, just go forward. Think you yeah. were a nine year old. Think you were a mm-hmm. five year old, mm-hmm. right? Of course, it's difficult because we have all the background, uh, but but somehow turn into a child a little bit mm-hmm. right it might help that that this element of, of pushing of trying of just stepping out of your comfort zone that this is absolutely necessary otherwise mm-hmm. you will be in this corner part of the furniture love it <laughs> part of the furniture and nothing will change actually yes you will only have this impression that you're starting but nothing will change yes but you know it's difficult for people it's difficult for well, people. Of course. Um, of course. We are, you know, we are professionals in our mm-hmm. own field. We are successful business owners and we are, you know, um, figures of authority for others. And I think now it is not being able to speak English fluently is perhaps sometimes seen as something um, which which takes away from your professionalism. Yes. And I think that's what people are afraid of. So they yeah. they want this, um, they want to be able to, to, to use the language, but they want to use it effectively. That, that, that's right, but that's what, what, how we step into the picture, right? We, we are there, you know, just to pull them, mm-hmm. you know, come on, just stay with us and we will, we will help you out. We'll tell you how to, uh, how to do it. Um, and then tell us what, what, what happened with you because your language and our, and our belief, right, that, that anybody who's listening, they would know that your language has this uh, different standard, different variety, which is great because then anybody who is starting, they can just get used to that and they can um, just listen to a different melody of the language. Uh uh because English has those different hues and and different melodies Mm, so 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 what happened later later on with you how how uh, how did you actually pick it up like that I must have you know I must have (laughs) when you're a child you you pick up the accent right Mm -hmm. Um, and obviously when you're you know children don't don't see this kind of you know Mm -hmm. difference in whether somebody speaks a more British English or more Scottish English um, I ended up studying in Glasgow, um, and Glasgow is very famous for having this kind of harsh Glaswegian accent. accent. Yes, and fortunately, I have not picked that up, or uh-huh. at least I don't. I don't think mm-hmm. I have. I know, mm-hmm. I know that there is a little bit of a of a twang to my accent. That you know. But did you do it consciously? I mean, you th- then because you you went to school, right? You 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 were studying there. So did you somehow try to get rid of that? So, thing sort of thing because we know that this Glaswegian accent might cause you know cause trouble in a sense that people wouldn't like to pick it up and and yeah. you didn't so yeah. your teachers somehow they stopped you from picking it up no I don't think so I think it was natural I think um I think we I think I don't I don't know if we can stop developing uh-huh. an accent I think mm-hmm. it's something particularly at a young age you just yeah. you, you pick it up naturally so it's it's um I don't think it's something that you, I don't think, I didn't try to consciously control it, mm-hmm. if, if that's what's, um, and at the university, you know, there are many people come from different countries to study. Glasgow is very multicultural. Mm-hmm. Um, so there is a variety of accents there. Um, it's yeah. not just, it's not just. So you, you were lucky in a sense. <laughs> yes. You know, I'm, I am happy that I don't have this, this full kind of very broad Scottish accent Mm -hmm. because I think when you go down to London for example it's seen as something quite inferior um, Uh and perhaps that's what I what I meant you Mm -hmm. know when I Mm -hmm. when I was talking about this Glaswegian accent some people may perceive it as something inferior yes yes Um, mm -hmm. yeah 
Okay, so you, you, we know that you that you are lucky. What, what about your sibling? Because we know that you've got a brother and a sister. Do yes, I remember yes, that right? I have an older brother. Yeah. Um, Do they also have the accent, or maybe they don't have the accent? They don't have a Scottish accent. No. Um, my brother is older, right? So he was about eleven. Eleven when we moved over. I love it when you said it. Eleven. <laughs> It's so Scottish. <laughs> eleven. <laughs> yes. Um, when we moved uh, to Scotland, so um, he found it a little harder. Mm -hmm. to learn English, to lose his Polish accent. Mm -hmm. When he speaks English, he has a very strong Polish accent. Mm -hmm. You can tell that he is not a native English mm -hmm. speaker. Mm -hmm. um, my sister... Because when we listen to you, sorry to interrupt you, I guess we may have this uh, feeling that you are this uh, native speaker. You you're know? native, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're mm -hmm. native. Yeah. Mm -hmm. However, you know, I have been told that there, that there is this some words... Some words I do pronounce slightly differently to 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 a native speaker, and perhaps um, if yeah, you are listening you are, you are attentively, not, yeah, you, know, you, you are not. But yeah. yeah, you are very close, so so mm -hmm. that. So we know that your brother has a bit of he has he has cut this bit of he uh, he, yeah. he he cannot lose this this uh -huh. Polish element of mm -hmm. his mm -hmm. his identity. Yeah. Uh, but my what sister, about your sis? My yeah, sister, but... well. Um, My sister was younger. She was about five when we moved. Okay, um, so she was the youngest. So you went in the middle. Was, mm -hmm. She was. So um, English is very natural for her. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that it's more, almost more natural than, than Polish. Uh -huh. um, so no, she she has no problem. She she sounds like a native speaker. Mm -hmm. you, you you yeah. She feels very comfortable. Yeah. You know, and like, so that's an interesting example of you, both you and your sister mm -hmm. because uh, you came back. Yes, you you yes. decided to to come back to to Poland, yes. and you had to switch back to to Polish. Mm -hmm. So in a way, you you can step into the shoes of our students because mm -hmm. you know how it is to speak a language you don't speak on a regular basis, so to say. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I think it's you know, at first I was a little worried. Uh -huh. Being away from Poland for so long, um, that you know, when you live in a country, when you're when you're when you're surrounded by by the language, by by English, in my case, it's very natural for you. You're you're able to maintain a conversation on any topic mm -hmm. in this language. Um, but you know, I was yes, I, I had my interests and I was listening to some content, some materials in, in, in the Polish language. Yeah. So how did you keep the language? And and was it was it a thing? Was it uh, conscious for your parents? Did they make this con conscious decision for you to keep Polish? Well, my Because dad always said yes. We when we're at home, we speak Polish. <laughs> yeah. Because he he was very aware of the fact that we would lose it if we mm -hmm. were not using it on a on a regular basis. Um, and it is difficult enough knowing, you know, technical terms and, um, and you know, for example, talking about historical facts, etc., mm -hmm. in a different language because you don't have the vocabulary. That's right. We have this everyday vocabulary which we use at home, but, yeah. um, but maintaining a conversation at a higher level, mm -hmm. it sometimes I lack words. Mm -hmm. You know, I lack vocabulary. But you mean in Polish? In Polish, yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So, so how how can you? Uh, keep keep it going, in a in a way that you, you mentioned interests, you mentioned books. So again, mm -hmm. it's it's a lovely thing because we are talking about the same thing, I guess. Uh -huh. Like this is studying a language or coming yes, back to exactly. a language, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but for you it is coming back to Poland in yeah. a in a yeah. in a way. So, what techniques did you use to to keep it, not to lose it? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So was it was it books? Was it, it films? Was, it was it was it was it was books. It was films. It was. Um, For example, you know, listening to podcasts, listening to the radio, and uh, it was just trying to trying to be as m absorbed in the language as mm -hmm. it was possible. That's a key thing. Um, yes, being yes. absorbed in the language, yes. any language. You exactly. want to do it, you have mm -hmm. to just stick to it. You have to yeah. uh, just uh, expose yourself to it as much yeah. as possible. That's mm -hmm. the that's a key element. And it's difficult. You know, it it, it was difficult because um, for for me it was it was more natural to switch into English. When, when there was, you know, um, I felt at one point that I was able to, um, to articulate myself more in yeah. English. Yeah, because you know more words. Yeah. And yeah. here we come to this context mm -hmm. and here we come to studying language, not through books in a sense that you've got this grammar that mm -hmm. you read and somehow you try to remember what's, what's written there, yeah. but through this context, right? So yeah. if you were interested in history, you read about history in a given language, And then somehow mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. learn about history through this language. Yeah. And yeah. this is how it stays mm -hmm. rather than this artificial thing that you've got a word in one language and then you've got another language and somehow you try to glue it, right? Yes, so the, of course. the interest, they, they keep keep mm -hmm. us keep us developing, keep us going. Yeah, yeah and it's you know, it's uh, it is I'll come back to this, it's 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 absorption, it's and it's trying to 
to understand what you are, what you're studying, what you're learning in this given language. Mm -hmm. So it's trying to, you know, because breaking through this language barrier, this this kind of initial fear of, you know, speaking English, of, of using it more, any any foreign language, um, you want to reach this stage where you're trying to th starting to think in it. Yes, where exactly. You, where you're not yeah. translating things word for word, when you're mm -hmm. not, when when you don't have your mother tongue constantly in the back of your head, you, yeah. you want to... You want to become at ease with yeah. it. Yeah, almost. but you will do it only when you switch the interest. So, like, the language doesn't yeah. become the end in itself. No. But, yeah. the, but the interest, you know, uh -huh. the book, uh -huh. the conversation, the friends, yeah. the, the travel, yeah. this is the thing that is that is there for you to uh, to keep you going yeah. rather than yeah. just the language itself. Of course, yes. It's, it's, not, just, it's yeah. not just the words. It's not just the, yeah, how we... Be, oh. Because you will learn, of, of course. I always repeat that. So, mm -hmm. you will learn. Yes, of course, if you, if you write the, the I, I guess... Like everybody has heard about this experiment, uh, some uh, scholars they they took a dictionary, yeah, uh -huh. like a A B C, uh -huh. and they started learning the words. I mean, all the language is there, isn't yeah. it? You know, you, you just learn. And of course, they fail. They fail miserably, oh. right? Because without context, without yeah. the the heart, the interest, uh -huh. something that that is b behind it, you, you you will never remember. The brain will never accumulate the language. Yeah. No, of course not. Of course, it's 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 too like we said, it's too artificial. It's too. Um, it's out of context. It's, it's unnatural. Mm -hmm. It's unnatural. And how did you uh, overcome, in a way? Because you, you told us that you didn't feel this fear mm -hmm. as a little girl when you were a little girl back in mm -hmm. Scotland. But now you came back to Poland as a grown-up <laughs> yeah. woman with your Polish. Let's say, of course, you spoke Polish, but mm -hmm. let's say that it wasn't na natural in a sense mm -hmm. that your first language was mm -hmm. English for, for, for the uh -huh, last... Uh -huh. uh, what nine nine years? So I remember right. For the mm -hmm. yeah, so uh, more than nine. Well, fifteen, years. 15, fifteen. You were nine when nine you were So yeah. yeah, for for fifteen years. So mm -hmm. did you have any any fear? Because this fear, this is something that the students come to us with. You know that mm -hmm. they say that they are afraid. Did you have any fear when you came back to Poland and you were maybe slightly afraid that people wouldn't I don't know understand you or they would hear that you are not originally from here. <laughs> Of course I did. Of course mm -hmm. I did, um, because you know because the the structure of the language in English is different, mm -hmm. right? Um, and like we said, this vocabulary as well. Um, sometimes I find that I just don't have the words, and it's sometimes it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing, yeah. you know, because you're trying to uh, maintain a conversation with someone. Um, you're looking them in the eye, and you know you you seem to have forgotten the most basic words and. Mm -hmm. It is, uh, you know, for us. As, so yes, I do. I do understand this. Um, yeah. this but this how do you oh, how do you overcome it? Is it is it just you know you just keep keep going, or is it right now when you were in mm -hmm. Poland? Do you uh, did you decide to read more, perhaps you know, to somehow c come back to this Polish ground, <laughs> Polish origin? I, I think you know it's talking to different people. It's uh -huh. talking to different people, mm -hmm. um, and. At every opportunity that you have, trying to um, trying to go out of your comfort zone mm -hmm. and trying to have this conversation, even if you feel like you're perhaps struggling a little, mm -hmm. um, listening to the radio. Yeah, I find that is. Uh, I'm a true fan of the radio, podcasting and, and yes, radio, podcast, because you, radio. because this yeah. is natural language yes, as yeah. well, you know. Um, and there is no picture. Mm -hmm. You see, so mm -hmm. the, the only thing that is working yeah. there is the mind and the ear. So if yeah. you don't hear something, sorry, you will not understand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, it's it's constant kind of absorption. Yeah, and it's you know it's 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 trying. It's you need to have this distance, kind of you know, between yeah. yourself and your performance and, that's, and how that's people it. judge you. Yes, mm -hmm. because yeah. you are not going. We all make mistakes. Yeah, we all make mistakes, and if we don't make them, we will not get better exactly. because we learn from them. So. Um, yes, I know it takes time, but it's... Um, and do you feel that your Polish has improved? <laughs> since I moved back? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, of do, course, do of course it mm -hmm. has, yes. Mm -hmm. Of course it has. I have more contact with, with, uh, with Polish people and mm -hmm. um, I read a lot more materials at the moment and it's, yeah, it's definitely, definitely improved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, do, you, do you think that you have picked up any, I don't know, everyday, everyday Polish, like, expressions, something, did, did anything surprise you? Everyday expressions are alright because you know we we spoke English uh, we spoke Polish in the house so yeah. we had that but it's um, some of um, I don't know you know people behave slightly differently in Poland as you know right <laughs> it's a completely different culture you know uh -huh. and back uh, back in in Scotland I was surrounded more by Scottish people 
um, by uh, by English speakers, um, and 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 these people have a little bit of a different culture. So mm-hmm. it's you know we we talk about different things. We. Um, what about the, uh, this visit at a supermarket? I remember once you told us about the visit at a supermarket and how fast it goes. Yes, that's... <laughs> yes, it's, you know, it seems like in the UK, life is a little slower. Right. <laughs> um, in Poland here, we, we rush. We rush into things a lot. Um, we do everything quite fast. I, yes, this was this was about six months ago, and I came back. We visited a supermarket, and <laughs> we had quite a lot of items, you know, to 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 go through to pack. And I remember that you know before we were finished with payments with everything, the the next person was being you know rushed and <laughs> was pushing. Along. Yes. <laughs> Um, and I thought, okay, you know, we, we haven't even packed our bags yet. Please let us, you know, us get time, our things together. Space, yeah. yeah. But the mm-hmm. cultural aspect, something you mentioned, is also a crucial thing. Some people think that you can you can study the language without stepping into this area, like mm-hmm. with, with, without thinking about these people mm-hmm. or their culture, because language is, uh, or culture, rather the other way around, I would say the culture is, ex- is expressed through language, yeah. right? So all these expressions that mm-hmm. are there, we can only study when we understand culture. And yeah. English is full of, I don't even know how to call it, but full of sailing expressions or water-related expressions yes. because that's an island, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We and are under the weather. And exactly, exactly. We take a rain check. And exactly, we're yeah. in the same boat. Uh-huh. Yeah, mm-hmm. And with, with Polish, I would say, it's more agricultural. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we mm-hmm. have m- m- more of this. And, and people somehow disregard it or they forget about it. But you will, again, you have to help your brain to make these associations. Yeah to understand what is going on mm-hmm. back there mm-hmm. in the, yeah. uh, in the yes. language. And I think, you know, even going on holiday for, you know, two weeks, three weeks, a month, trying to visit the country, immerse yourself in the culture, mm-hmm. you will then start picking up this, this we say vibe, yeah. right? this, this kind of, this, this atmosphere that is in the different country. Mm-hmm. And I think that can help you too. Exactly. Yeah. Now I'd like to switch the conversation a little bit. I mean, I'd like to move to uh, mm-hmm. to a different subject. You as a you as a teacher, and tell me please how much of what you have experienced mm-hmm. yourself studying the language as a little girl and then as a conscious person, as a grown up grown up person. How much of it do you do you bring into your classroom? So, mm-hmm. what elements you know that are working mm-hmm. and what elements are not working? Mm-hmm. The artificial element. Yes, we know I think it's not, that, I think this is that. it. Trying to create a natural atmosphere, yeah. you know, and trying to make the students feel at ease because when we feel comfortable, when we forget that we are um, that we are making these grammatical mistakes because we are mm-hmm. when we are, you know, learning to to learning a language initially. Um, it's trying to to look at yourself as a learner mm-hmm. and trying to understand that um, this is a process which takes time, um, and and it's through you know it's through this natural communication right that we that we will pick up the language. So um, I want to create an atmosphere which is quite friendly, right, mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. where people can open up, where where they can share their experiences, and when they know that they're not going to be judged, mm-hmm. for example. There's been another study, so I'll, mm-hmm. I'll try to just um, add some scholar element to uh-huh. our discussion, but there's been this study that children, for sure, they don't learn from people they don't like. Mm-hmm. And I would mm-hmm. say, mm-hmm. I would say that it applies bo- mm-hmm. both to, to mm-hmm. adults and children. Yeah. So if we, of course, we, Adults study the language in a bit different way. We are more conscious. Mm-hmm. And even if something is, let's say, wrong, we we know we have yeah. to do it, blah, blah, blah. But we are still talking about this effectiveness of what we're doing, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. I'm sure in your teaching career, you've met people who will come to you and say, I've been studying English for the last five years, seven years, but the mm-hmm. effect is not there. The effect is very mm-hmm. little. Mm-hmm. So uh, we have to ask the question, the question why? And mm-hmm. this atmosphere, right? We have to help our brain because this atmosphere really helps to study. Yes, yes it, it does. It does. And, and it's, you know, um, in our line of work where we have this one-on-one teaching experience, you need to build a relationship with yes. the other person. You, the we, need this, bond. we need this interaction. You need to feel at ease. You need to feel like you are, um, like you're, like you're yourself. Yeah. Um, but also that you're almost talking to a friend. Yes, yeah. and you're almost, able to, you're yeah. able to, you know, to to let go of this kind of perfectionism sometimes. Yes. 
Um, you know, I've had students who, for example, start forming a sentence and they will pause and they will wait for my confirmation whether this is the correct tense they've used. Um, and sometimes, you know, sometimes I don't know because you know in English you, a one word can change whether we use, the, I don't know, present perfect or the past simple, right? Mm. So I think it's, it's trying to create this, this kind of atmosphere where they feel like they can, they don't need this constant um, confirmation yes. of, you know, mm -hmm. am I, is this word correct? Is this next word correct? So it's, it's, it's trying to, um, yes, it's trying to m make them feel like they're talking to someone who is quite yeah. on the same level, you know, a yes. friend. Yeah, a friend. Like, a, like I said, almost like a friend, because mm -hmm. on the other hand, we are teachers and mm -hmm. what we do, and this is also part of our job, is to correct. Yeah. Because people mm -hmm. come come here and they also complain that, you know, I've been learning English, but nobody corrected me. So mm -hmm. I, I don't even know because that's what we do with little children, right? When mm -hmm. they say something, that's what I do as mm -hmm. a, as a mm -hmm. mom. That w when I hear some expression, I always, you know, applaud it like, yay, great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then when there is a slight mistake, I say, okay, so we need a different ending. We need a, a different, a bit of a different structure, but mm -hmm. there is no correction through marks, you know, like, oh, gee, that's a, that's a mistake, you know, mm -hmm. and somebody will just <laughs> stop talking to me, you know, after, after a, a second, yes? And th mm -hmm. th that's the, the, the thing we are trying to change in the process. Mm -hmm. we, we are trying mm -hmm. to sh show, show these people that if you are studying the language, any language, we are talking here about English, but mm -hmm. I can be actually any language, you are like a child, right? You are back, you know, back at school, and it is also a difficult thing, psychologically speaking. Yeah. So how can we how can we help them? Because um, mm, there is this coaching also that we do mm -hmm. a, a little bit. Because we meet, as you mentioned, you know, these uh, business owners, you know, yeah. top professionals, uh, people who have the wonderful careers. But there is this one little element of the language that they <laughs> like, and they, they struggle and they with. lose this confidence, right? Mm -hmm. And we are also mm -hmm. there to pat their shoulders a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know, sometimes it's good to. Um, to look at other people as well and their use of English. That's you know? right. Because Always look at them. Always yes. listen to what they say. Mm -hmm. Because we, you know, um, we meet students and, for example, someone will, a student I meet for the first time will mm -hmm. say, oh, you know, my English is not very good. I don't feel oh, very comfortable. We hear it every time. Every single um, time. And yes. then they maintain a conversation. And then they can speak <laughs> with you for, yes, yeah. uh, and maintain a conversation and, um, and use sophisticated vocabulary, you know, and complex grammatical structures. So I think sometimes... Um, sometimes they are not aware of how much they know. Yeah. Where does it come from? What, what do you think? What's your, what's your yeah, what, what's your just, even I would say, like, private opinion here? Because we experience this uh -huh. almost, well, if not in, in every class, but oftentimes with a new students. People will, will sit, because mm -hmm. what we do is online, right? They will sit yeah. in front of the cameras and they will tell us, I don't speak English. And then they speak. Yes. Mm -hmm. And where does it come from? Mm -hmm. You know, how, how to, it's, it's really hard to explain. It is I think. hard. It is hard because Logically. You, yeah, yeah. It's, um, I don't know, you know, perhaps they feel like they cannot fully articulate themselves in a Or maybe there's language. been too much of the correction back yeah. then, you know, like somebody, mm -hmm. because when we correct too much, yeah, we yeah. just uh, uh, pay attention, draw their attention to, mm -hmm. to, the, mistake, to the mistakes, not mm -hmm. to the success, yeah. right? And yeah. there has to be this positive reinforcement right mm -hmm. the success is there the communication is there mm -hmm. and and the co correction will come but this is the, the the second element yeah so you know so but it is a fine balance it is a fine balance it between is a balance. you know we have to yeah that's you know job. between letting them <laughs> for example streams. finish finish a, a a line of thought before you before you stop them because they made a, a an error in a tense um but uh, but you know but uh, but when there are too many mistakes for example it's 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 also you know there are some that you know we we, we shouldn't for example let go too quickly so mm -hmm. um so it is it is a fine balance um but i find that this uh, this um this this ease of speaking you know this this kind of feel that um i'm i'm speaking a different language and and i feel comfortable doing it perhaps you know communication is the most important aspect of speaking yeah. any language so if they're able to communicate their needs if they're able to um to buy bread <laughs> then they've abroad. achieved they've achieved what what the, what they've set out to do so it's mm -hmm. after that it's just a case of you know perfecting mm -hmm. uh, perfecting their their use of language mm -hmm. are you surprised with anything when it comes to polish learners of english because back in scotland mm -hmm. you were you were teaching you were working with other nationalities is yeah. that so yes 
No, I had a couple. Wish. I had a couple of Polish students, but they were um, they were young people from uh, from you know from high school, essentially just mm -hmm. wanting a little bit of help with reading, etc. So mm -hmm. this was slightly different. I yeah, think. but 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 other other people did they come from other nationalities? You know, because I've, yes. I've got this experience of teaching Spaniards, I, I think, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, Germans, mm -hmm. I believe. Yes, I had a couple of Italians and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, a guy from China as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And do you think that we Polish learn English in a different different way? Like like, um, do you observe any anything common for for us, or, or we you, focus you we focus on grammar way exactly. too much? Exactly, we that, focus on grammar. That was what way I was too much. what I was waiting for. Yes, mm -hmm. on, on grammar yes. and this for, performance. I would yes, say. the the fact that we have twelve tenses in English, and you know, I have to think how which many one I, I have, have no to idea, use. Really, you know? <laughs> Never counted. <laughs> um, Doesn't help. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> really. Yes, we 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 focus too much on being, you know very correct and we focus too much on these um these examples from the textbook yeah um and making sure that we have all the right endings and that you know the words are all in the right order etc and um but it's it's very difficult to then translate that into um into a conversation so we we do we 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 focus. We rely on these textbooks way too mm -hmm. much. Yeah. So I would I would just sum up what we have just uh, discussed uh, uh, today a little bit. That we as a nation, I think, we make one very common <laughs> common mistake studying English, and this is something I I, I give this example uh, very often that. When we think about Scandinavia, uh -huh. I would say that most people are bilingual even. So yeah. so we can do it. It is possible. Yeah. But somehow the focus is on, on conversation, uh -huh. on this communication, uh -huh. not on this on this uh, grammar yeah. uh, co correctness, full uh -huh. correctness. Uh -huh. And that's why we are, we are there to, to help people, right? So, yeah. uh, so we're, we're giving them the helping, the helping hand. Definitely, <laughs> yes. I think move, uh, move away from, from these textbooks a little and, yeah. and just try to... Try to do it in a more natural way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Seems like a recipe for success, isn't Definitely. it? Definitely. Yes, <laughs> I recommend that. Yeah, yeah. that attitude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we both we both uh, agree here, right? We both recommend the uh, the thing. And what can we say, right? Uh, we will keep on going. We'll keep on helping our students, and we'll keep on proving them that yes. it's possible. Yes. Yes. And you know, and and one thing that I like to do is sometimes um, show them how far they've come. Less because success. I think that, yes, and they can see that difference too. They can feel it and they know they're a little more comfortable. But sometimes you have to remind them because they forget. They yeah. forget. And, and it's very, very motivating when they, when they think back and they... Yeah. They that's a lovely that, that's yeah. a lovely ending i think to the conversation you know yeah. the success element so yeah. the success can be can be there mm -hmm. you just have to find the right path how to do it definitely yes, yes. thank you thank you Ulla, for for being with me today uh thank you for yeah for for finding a bit of time to it's been to a talk, pleasure <laughs> thank you very to, much yeah to talk yeah. to me yeah thank so you. see you see you back at work definitely yes <laughs> thank you